I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA and Network Plus 2009 video training session comparing distance vector routing updates and link state databases. And before you think, boy, that really doesn't sound very exciting. Uh, actually, I'm doing this in response to quite a few emails I've gotten from students and people who have seen the videos who have seen the theory of how distance vector routing updates and link state protocols differ but you wanted to see a comparison of the two. So what I've done is set up a lab where we're actually running a distance vector protocol and a link state protocol simultaneously and we're going to compare the routing tables and the databases and you can take a look at that. We're going to be running RIP version 2 for our distance vector protocol and we're going to be running OSPF for our link state protocol. It's a simple two router lab, nothing complex at all but I want to show you some debugs and some show commands for you, especially for you Cisco certification candidates that you should be aware of. But the output of these commands will help both Network Plus and CCNA students understand just a bit better and actually see some of these differences in action rather than just seeing the theory. So let's take a look at that. And what we're going to do from here is just talk a moment about distance vector and link state protocols, how the routing updates are handled. Distance vector protocols are going to send a full routing update at a fixed interval. With RIP version 2, the one we're using, and I'll actually bring the uh, routers up here and run show IP protocols to show you the uh, protocols that we're using. Notice with RIP, at the very top of the output of this command, we're sending updates every 30 seconds. Well, that's, that's a lot of updates. And remember, with distance vector protocols, we're sending a full routing table out every single time. Well, hopefully, your network routing tables are not really changing every 30 seconds, so that's a little bit unnecessary. We'll cover that in another video, but I do want to show you uh, that we are running RIP version 2 here, sending updates every 30 seconds. That's our distance vector protocol for this particular lab. We're also running OSPF, and you'll notice it says sending updates every 0 seconds. We don't really have a fixed interval of updates with OSPF, which can be a good thing because we probably don't need, again, those updates every 30 seconds. So on router 2, I'm going to run a quick show config here. I'll just show you what I've done. We, are, we have two separate links connecting uh, routers 1 and 2. And over the frame, they are running the 172.12.0.0 network. And over the Ethernet, the 172.23.23 network. So those are going to show up as directly connected on router 1. Note that we're advertising this particular network in o, into OSPF and this particular network 2000 into RIP. So let's go up to router 1 then and first run the big routing table command if you will show IP route and I call it big because you get a lot more output not only are you going to see the routes from all sources but you're also going to get this big routing table uh, code table at the top. The reason I mentioned that as well, let me give us a little bit of space here before we come back and look at that. If you just want to look at your RIP routes, you can always just run show IP route RIP. And if you just want to see your OSPF routes, you can run show IP route OSPF. But here you can see that we do have a RIP route, an OSPF route, as we would expect. And, you know, these look similar in the routing table. You know, of course, their administrative distances are a little bit different. That's always going to be the first number here in the brackets. And their metrics, as you know, if you've been studying for your CCNA, or the cost of how to get there, if you will, with OSPF, that's going to be a lot different. But here I want to run some debugs and some show commands to kind of show you what these databases look like with OSPF and then what the routing update looks like with RIP. And I'm going to run debug IP RIP. And instead of waiting for the next scheduled update, I ran clear IP route asterisk, which empties your routing table of all dynamically discovered routes. And I'll go ahead and run undebug all here. So it's a little bonus for you Cisco certification uh, candidates there, a couple of extra commands. You can take a look at these updates that are being received uh, and then being sent out. We don't have one, yeah, sending requests. We didn't send one out yet. 
actually we did there at the bottom but you can take a look at a rip update and kind of see what's going on you can see what routes are being received how they're being advertised what the hop count is who it's coming from that kind of thing so it's pretty intuitive OSPF our link state protocol and our other link state protocol IS to IS they're not going to really have anything like this because they're advertising the state of their links. They are not advertising networks per se. I know it kind of sounds like I'm splitting hairs there, but it is a major difference between distance vector and link state protocols. And what I wanted to show you here is the OSPF database itself. This is what routers running OSPF are really advertising are these link state entries. Now you and I as network admins, we do not have to look at this database and then calculate routes, thankfully, because we saw that show IP route OSPF will show you the routing table that you're more familiar with or that you certainly should be familiar with before you take the CCNA exam. So the RIP and OSPF routing tables actually look somewhat similar. You've got your network there and your mask, your administrative distance. Uh, the source of it or what the next top IP address is, uh, how long it's been since the last update, and additional information. So that's going to look kind of the same, but it's important for you to know that with RIP, we've got those full routing updates going out and being received uh, every half minute by default, where with OSPF we have these link states that are being advertised, and they are advertised only when there is actually a change in the network. So some important information there for you in your studies. I want to invite you out to networkpluscertification.com, our Network Plus 2009 cert site, and of course the bryantadvantage.com, over 300 free Cisco and Server 2008 tutorials there. The CCNA Mastermind webinar is going on demand soon. You definitely want to come out and read about that. And if you're on YouTube or any other video sharing site right now, make sure to watch my other videos. We've got uh, just about 100 of them out right there and one coming out just about every day. Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this particular video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933. Thanks for watching.